Minecraft 1.20 is out. And that means armor trims. I already got a couple. <laughs> we might go uh, take a look at some of the other ones today, but the real thing I'm most excited for is uh, we need three amethyst, amethyst shards to make the calibrated skulk sensor. I suppose we could mine these, but I like keeping some of those around. Uh, we can go stop at our amethyst cluster. Yeah, the calibrated skulk sensors. That is probably my favorite thing they've added. I always forget. Oh, there we go. I never remember where the amethyst thing is because I only go there once in a while and uh, So I leave myself blocks That way I can know what's in that direction. It's a lot easier than leaving signs and it's more visually uh, I don't know faster to like recognize what's going on You can kind of just like glance and keep going so like the skulk is that way, but the amethyst is this way Aha here we are so, looks like I might have to hang out here for a little bit and wait for them to grow. I guess I could show you the armor trims I got, because I've only got a couple so far. I found the rib stuff, which is in nether fortresses, like wither skeletons, as you would expect. I went and found a bunch of elytra, and I got the spire one from the spirey end cities, and I got a snout armor trim, which looks really cool. I actually put it on my chest piece me it actually the armor trims actually make me want to wear the chest piece more like just with how cool it looks i think the snout chest plate is potentially the coolest one i came up with a design that uses like four different armor trims and it looks pretty cool together but uh <laughs> i only have the snout one of those four and i think the rib is maybe the best like complete set actually if i had a rib chest plate i probably wouldn't even put it on the helmet but anyway Oh, I also got the upgrade template, uh, the netherite upgrade thing. Now to make netherite armor, you need this uh, thing to, and it sort of like makes the progression a little bit better. Where's my, ha. Ah. We need fortune so that we can actually get the most out of these crystals. Oh, that should about do it. Oh yeah, we can make more than a stack of the calibrated stuff. The first place to go is actually on our way back here which is to the villager mushroom resort over here. We made this thing last episode and it uses a skulk sensor and it would be way better if it used a calibrated skulk sensor. So let me sleep the night away. Wabam. Then we can take a look at this super cool new block. I only have 23 skulk sensors. Uh, all right. Well, we definitely have enough amethyst shards then. There we go. Bam. So. How do these things work? So I think these are really similar to regular skulk sensors, but they have a lower cooldown, which is why you're seeing it send more signals. Like if I walk around, this is triggering a lot more quickly than it used to trigger for skulk. In fact, if we put another one here, Yeah, you see, this one can get multiple signals before this one has even finished cooling down. So this is just better overall. But you can filter the signal so that it only accepts one type of signal. And that is the, that's why it's called calibrated. How do we get to the redstone here? Probably just digging down. Oh, yep. I covered it all up and made no entrance. So this is the command blocks that bring the... Uh, villager in, in case you had forgotten, but the skulk sensor, which is what we're interested in, is inside of this little wool tunnel. Right in there. Oh no. <laughs> I forgot there's water in there so it doesn't make sounds. Now how well do I remember the redstone? Oh, this was the... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to do this. Boom. It's good. Uh, we should actually test the calibration. Oh, I do have a door. <laughs> uh, I guess that means we can cover this up. Um, but we need to test what triggers the calibrated skulk sensor. Because we want it to only, we want it to be calibrated to this bell, basically. So, I have conveniently made a book 
that has all of the skulk sensor stuff. So let me figure out because they updated the frequencies. So a lot of things are different. Um, six used to be what the bell was, and now that's like riding a horse or interacting with a mob, like maybe a villager. And I think the one we're looking for is either 10 or 11. So blocks activating or blocks changing. So let's just give it a little bit of a test. So because the frequencies have changed, this bell doesn't uh, activate the system anymore. So we can pretty easily just uh, slap down some redstone and see if we are on a 10 or 11. Oh. It's not light. Oh, okay. So something interesting about skulk sensors is how you can calibrate them. And what I didn't know was where you calibrate them, but it kind of looks like this purple side is the calibration side. So if you want it to output a signal, you need to not put that next to it. Oh, yep, there we go. So if we ring the bell, is this a 10 or 11? Wow, that disappears very fast. This is so much faster than the previous skulk sensor. That is ridiculous. Uh, we might actually need a, <laughs> we might need a regular one to even see. That is so crazy. Wow, this thing is so much better. Like, having a faster reset is very good, in my opinion. So, if we... Oops. Yeah, okay, that stays on longer. So, ring the bell. Looks like it goes to here. 10. Now let's put this up against the calibration side. One, two, three. And what we shall do... Oh wait, I need subtraction here. So you, you input the redstone signal strength that you want it to listen for. So if we want it to listen for a 10, um, a redstone torch is 15. So well, let's just check this. Yep, power 15. 14, 13, 12, 11. Does it? Uh, we probably just put it here. Now it should be listening for 10. So if we put some redstone output, not triggering, not triggering, still not triggering. See, and that's the great thing. <laughs> what did I do wrong here? Oh, okay. I moved the torch over one. So now if we walk around, it doesn't trigger. So that means when the villagers are here, they're not going to trigger it. Only the bell triggers it. Oh, look at that. It's such a quick signal too. Oh, this is so cool. So let's go fix it so that our bell actually works on the, the part that's connected down here. So this redstone that we broke before, we actually don't need it with the calibrated skulk sensor. Very awesome. Because that is used to detect like what signal strength is coming out. But because we're calibrating it, we're sort of pre-testing for that. So... There we go. I uh, just put an empty block so that that way, if I break it on accident, uh, water doesn't pour out everywhere. So we could probably just set it like this. So the calibration will come in from this side and then the output will happen here. So we'll pull the signal out and we'll just pipe it into this torch here. And the cool thing about this too is uh, we had space constraint issues. And that's why these blocks and redstone are over here. We don't need that anymore because calibrated skulk sensors are awesome. So uh, a lot less space issues. And then we just need to calibrate it. Oh, wait a second. This is going to be confusing because we're going through a block. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So torch should be here, I guess. And that's not going to loop um, because this torch isn't attached to that block. So now I think it will work. This says 11. Let's go try. It's possible that powering through a block like with the comparator may mess things up a little bit. But we will see. That's the fun thing of new stuff. You don't know everything. All right. This should make stuff happen. We should get a librarian that's summoned here. 
Ooh, okay, so that just works. Nice. So as we mess around with this wireless redstone, I'm hoping that we learn a micro circuit. Which, if you recall, are like little redstone puzzle pieces that you can sort of mix and match to build your contraptions. Um, but one problem that with our current micro circuit is we have like the calibration input and then the output of the uh, calibrated squawk sensor. And this takes up a fair bit of space. Now we can reduce the amount of space that it requires by just putting a block that a comparator can get a signal out of. So like if we do, you know, this, then the comparator is sending a bit of a signal, but you need a lot of items for a chest to send very large of a signal. In fact, uh, what do we have here? Three. Yeah, so it doesn't even, <laughs> it doesn't stretch very far. We would just have to like spam this full of items and we would have to do that for every single micro circuit that we wanted. And like this, <laughs> this isn't even getting all the way. This is only power six. Um, so <laughs> that's not very practical. So we need a block that a comparator can get a signal out of that's a little bit more practical than this. So a common choice and potentially our best option is actually the lectern here. So if we slap down a comparator, you'll notice that it's getting a signal and it's getting a big signal. So it's based on the, the book page. So this is a signal of nine, yep. So that makes it very easy to get a signal strength of one, like here, or a signal strength of the max, 15. So very simple to do, you don't need extra items. The problem is, it's a little bit annoying to make lecterns and especially written books, or these uh, book and quill things. I had kind of a weird idea. So they updated, uh, they updated smithing tables. And what I want to know is, oh, it doesn't look like they saved the item. It's because if they saved it, then maybe we could have used it to uh, hold a comparator signal. I put a comparator. Oh, it doesn't even light up, even when you're in the window. Man, okay, that would have been cool. So maybe the lectern is our best option. <laughs> I don't have feathers anywhere. Well, uh, I guess this is a good opportunity to go back to the main base. I need amethyst blocks, actually. And I don't remember if you can craft them. Oh, you can. We're going to leave them as shards um, and just get some blocks from the base. Because you can only craft the uh, skull, the calibrated ones with um, the, the shards. I'm having some brain waves. Thinking of some ideas here. Maybe we don't need a written book every time for the lectern. Because we, I think we can clone these. The real question is like, can we slap them in a lectern? Ah. <laughs> All right, let's just see here. I don't know. I haven't messed with lecterns at... Oh. oh, wait, this is the command book. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a written book. Does it still send a signal? This is big news if it does. Oh. Well, okay, that's very easily answered. Oh yeah, it <laughs> it divides by the number of pages. So because this is three of three, then it does uh, the max 15 strength. So that's pretty significant if I could remember how to copy books. Is it, do you need a written book? Whoopsie. Ah. Uh, okay, it looks like you still need a written book. Man, so we'll just make some books. And make a fat stack of written books. These don't stack. <laughs> of course not. Why would they? That would make too much sense. Oh my. So if I just make a simple book like this, a little bit nicer than what it was before. Um, make sure it only has 15 pages. Then I can sign it. I'll call it 15. 15 power, I guess. And sign and close. And now we can copy that into all these other books. Yeah. And then we could just store a bunch of these in the redstone shulker. Wait, these didn't get converted. Oh, copy of a copy, copy of original. <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. Can I not fix these? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now these don't stack. So it's really important to have the original in there, I guess. But now we can just make lecterns. Oops, let's take this book out. 
and we can slap in this uh, 15 power and set it to whatever power we want. Now lecterns are a little bit easier to craft because bookshelves are easier to get if you have uh, villagers that is. So we'll just pre-craft a bunch of lecterns. Now if you recall I also said I wanted amethyst blocks and that's because there's another feature that combines really well with the calibrated skulk sensors. Before we get to that, let's just check that this part of the micro circuit works. So normally what we do is we have the calibrated skulk sensor, we have a comparator going into it, and we have the 15 power here set to the correct page, which I believe is, I think. Let's just make sure this is working. Yep, okay, so the, you can hear the piston go. Okay, good. Yeah, so that is pretty awesome. So the gist of it is you connect a calibrated skulk sensor to an amethyst block, and it can, like, repeat the sound over, like, long distances. So let's set up a little micro circuit for the bell uh, using what we just learned. So lectern, comparator and calibrated skulk sensor we'll put the we're trying to use the copy of copies up so then uh turn that to 11. so now when we walk around nothing happens excellent and then yep so this triggers from that and apparently if we put an amethyst block i'm not quite sure if you need to put it in a specific oh <gasps> yeah okay so you heard that dingle dingle <laughs> So that means that the amethyst block is resonating, which is a new thing that they added. But basically, that resonance will retransmit the sound. So then we could set up another uh, one. It can't be too far away. And then we need some way to see the output of this. I'll snag a piston. We don't have regular pistons. What? Dispenser works. OK. Now this is very much too far away for that bell to trigger it directly. So if this dispenser gets triggered, that means the resonate thingy is working like we would expect. So we will ring the bell. You can hear it getting resonated and look at that. So wireless redstone has really <laughs> stepped up here. I mean, you can imagine if you just have a few of these uh, uh, micro circuits because all you really need is the uh, is to just add an amethyst block next to this this setup like it's so easy so we have redstone that can go through walls and through air so let's test it let's connect it up to this system and make some input points uh, around the map we'll need a few bells which means we probably will need some iron so that we can get emerald so that we can get bells I don't know who sells bells, though. Ah, the toolsmith. Trade up some iron. There we go. We got a bell. So we'll get going with just this one, and I'll trade for more later. Um, but this area is going to be the industrial district eventually. So we would probably want at least one bell somewhere in here. Right here, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really uh, matter specifically where it goes. More just the distance. So what we can do is set up one of these micro circuits, the, the calibrated micro circuits that we came up with. And then the really important part is the resonance. So now we should be able to hear. Yep, we can hear that resonance activating. So now we just need like a, a trail of them. <laughs> the more I think about this, uh, the more ideas I'm having. So I think it might be kind of interesting if we turn this into a race, because technically this current wire, um, wireless vibration wire or whatever you want to call it, could be just regular redstone. Like we could just do this and, you know, slap some repeaters down. So what might be interesting is to set that up and see which thing triggers first. And then the third way, uh, hmm. It's going to be to use observers. Uh, I need more of them. Observers are a, a common thing if you want to make redstone like go up, you know, because you can just you can just pretty much do this, and that's pretty easy to do. Very expensive to make. 
I made four. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very expensive to make. Just flew across the river over here, and I'm just going to snag a bunch of cobblestone so we can actually give the observers a fair shot. And we'll craft as many of these as we can. There it is, 23, okay. So that should give us, that probably won't go the whole way, but that'll give us at least enough to get an idea. Okay, I got an idea for how we can test uh, who wins the race. So all we really need is just a random block and then a few sticky pistons that are a little ways away from the block. All right, so we'll hook them all up to an observer. That will do a, uh, a one tick pulse. I put this backwards. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that should make it pretty quick. And whichever one retracts first, we'll have the block. So the other two won't be able to grab it. So we'll be able to like walk over here and see, oh, you know, which one of these is the fastest method. So as I'm setting up each of the lines for the racing here, um, I'm only using one piston at a time, so I don't spoil the result. Um, but I learned a little micro circuit, which is kind of fun. So this actually is an observer stabilizer. I learned it from the wiki. And if you have multiple pulses, normally without this setup, the observer will trigger twice, which we don't want, right? Because it will put the block back in the center. We want it to keep the block so we can actually see who won. But this observer stabilizer is really cool. For short pulses, you only need uh, one repeater at four ticks and it'll lock the thing so it doesn't get any extra input. Um, I've been using a stone button, so I actually need two repeaters. Uh, but this way, every time you click the button, it only triggers once. Because this second, uh, when it turns off, it, the repeater is still locked, so it doesn't get any signal through. Really, really useful micro circuit to know about. I'm definitely remembering this. And additionally, the cool thing is, is it's still a one tick pulse. So the piston can retract a block and the sticky piston can uh, place the block or float it or whatever you want to call it. So very, very useful. It doesn't get rid of the, the whole point of using an observer, um, but it just, it just stabilizes it. Very awesome. Okay, this is the last line getting fixed up here. So we got to open that up so that it can actually receive the, the signal. The wool uh, otherwise would block it. And then we need a way for it to repeat the sound. Yep, okay, so this is triggering now. <laughs> okay, I can turn this off now. And then put the sticky pistons back. And everything should be reset. We'll put some fireworks in there. <laughs> Alright then, this is the big, the big moment. Is the new calibrated skulk sensors faster than the other modes of redstone? Is that wireless quicker or is it a trade-off and it's slower? We shall find out. All right, are you ready? We're gonna hit the bell and we'll see which one retracts first. Should I count this down? I guess that would kind of make sense. It's a race, right? Three, two, one, go. And they're off, they're flying, they're fast. Who wins? Oh, no way, it's the skulk sensor. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I really didn't know. That's crazy. Oh my goodness, not only is it wireless, it's fastest. That's crazy. <laughs> well, if that doesn't say it, I don't know what does. Calibrated skulk sensors are awesome. That is so cool. We could just set this up, remove this, and then see what second place would be. Okay, if I turn around really fast, we can actually watch the redstone and the observers happening. So if I smack this. Okay, so the redstone triggers first. And then the observers trigger much, much later. So it's as simple as that. Skulk sensors are the fastest. Regular redstone is the cheapest and uh, the second fastest. It also can't go through air. It can't go through walls, couldn't go through water, um, <laughs> which is another advantage that the skulk sensors have. And now this new wireless redstone. And observers are the slowest and most expensive. And I honestly, with these, with calibrated skulk sensors existing, I don't know why you would use uh, observers to carry a signal anywhere. You just would use observers for regular observer things instead of like a line of redstone, you know? But yeah, it looks like these calibrated skulk sensors, these are the way to go. <laughs>
<laughs> that is awesome. Well, I think that is going to do it for this episode. That was a fun little test to run with the new blocks. I'm a, I'm a big fan, as you can tell. I like these skulk sensors. They're really fun to use. I like the fact that there's an event uh, tracker, effectively. Like, that's what these skulk sensors are, is they can track, like, events, like bells being rung, villagers walking. Oh, yeah, you can see the firework. <laughs> skulk sensors! <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had as much fun with this exploration of the calibrated skulk sensors as I did. And that's going to do it for me. So I'll catch you in the next one. Later, later.